So uh, we're here at the University of Central Florida. This is our microprocessors 2 electronics class. And we're lucky enough today, because we're using the propeller in lab, to have Chip Gracie with us to uh, kind of show us this company and tell us a little bit about the propeller. So, uh, hi Chip. Hi. Uh, morning, Chip. Hi, Chip. Good morning. And, and this is the class. <laughs> Part of it, yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay. Thank you all. So, um, so Chip, tell us a little bit about your company, and uh, I don't know. Maybe you can just start us off with the history. Like, where did you guys start? Cadillac started in 1987. Uh, my friend from the seventh grade, Lance Wally, and I, we wanted to have some kind of venue to which to design and market our little invention, uh, all of which were related to computers. We did a lot of early stuff for the Apple II, and. Uh, so my dad kind of got peripherally involved, and he had the foresight to incorporate it, which proved to be, you know, very beneficial going into the future. But uh, we just started out making little add-ons for the Apple PGS computer, and um, we made some memory cards, some commodity kind of products, and we made some sound digitizers. But prior to that, Lance and I had worked together since the seventh grade, and we were designing some products which we were selling commercially when we were freshmen in high school, when we were about 14 or so. So Parallax was something that kind of happened late. And uh, it initially, I, I just had you know my bedroom at my parents' house, and Lance had uh, a bedroom at his dad's house, and we had phone lines brought in so we could you know talk to people. And we would put little uh, nice page ads in the back of the magazine for, to tell our stuff. And so people would call us, and we chat with them about what it was, and if it, they wanted it, they'd order it, and uh, at the time, we didn't have any kind of credit card processing, so we had to do a lot of CODs or prepayment, and then we'd run down to like the local convenience store to ship the boxes out. And uh, this went on, this is how Parallax worked initially, and it's how we used to do things before that, but then as uh, our business level increased, we slowly you know, started renting space. Um, we got some off office space out in Citrus Heights, which is about 20 miles from here or so, more towards central Sacramento, and then we hired an employee or two. In fact, we still have one, uh, Chantel Wood, she's been with us since 91, I think. So see, it was four years, three or four years before we actually hired any employees. Up to that point, Lance and I were doing everything ourselves. We, you know, not just design the product and and, and, and write the manuals and, place, and design and place the ads and talk to customers. We'd build everything by hand when the order came in and then we'd uh, you know, ship it out and just do everything. And now we've got, now Parallax has about 44, 45 people and um, all I have to really worry about is just engineering anymore, which is nice. But it just grew very slowly and organically and we never anticipated that it would you know, become what it is. I mean, I remember our friend saying one time, man, you guys need to build 500 or something. You're always building 5 or 10 of anything. Why don't you build 500 or something? We just couldn't conceive of that. Now we'll, we'll build 5,000 or maybe you order 50,000 or something. But it just grew very slowly, and it, there was no intent to make, really make a company or anything. It just evolved to become what it is. So um, what else? Do you guys have any questions? Uh, well, Chip. I just want to say that the propeller is really fun and it's easy to use and it seems really effective for every function. And I was wondering what made you want to start developing a propeller? Oh, just, just, just what you said. We said something that was going to be fun and uh, interesting and uh, capable of running interesting software and being a platform for interesting software. So, you know, we've been, I've been programming for 28 years now. And um, I've always had, I, r I really love algorithms, you know, like the speech stuff and sound things. And I just wanted a platform which could uh, run the stuff adequately and, um, and just be useful for, you know, trying things out and just kind of exploring. And uh, there's really nothing that I ran into ever that was like that. You know, most most processors that get made by companies are done very formulaically and they're based on a lot of uh, legacy technology and and the whole flow of everything is 
you know, more or less this constant chain of complicated tools. And I just wanted to make something that was uh, fun to use and powerful and able to do stuff I wanted to do. Definitely. Yeah, you guys have always seemed to capture the hobbyist market. I mean, not just the hobbyists. Obviously, you want to get into commercial products as well, but, you know, it, it's always been a good place to start, even with a basic stamp. And, I mean, you give the, the tools away free on your website, the manuals are free. Um, has that always been your intention? Yeah, I mean, if we could, and we seem to be able to survive quite well just doing educational kind of stuff, and, uh, I mean, it's nice to have some, you know, commercial uh, type outlets for our products, but if we can survive uh, doing education, that would be fine with us. You know, we don't need to uh, hit all the checklist points for, you know, a commercial product. Um, really, the core of what we do is we try to, we love to make things, so we make things that can be used in turn to make other things, and uh, we, it should be fun and easy to use, and, you know, that's the fun point is something that I think everyone misses designing chips usually because it's so formulaic, there's so much money behind everything and there's such commitments for, you know, return on investment that uh, fun is not even considered. It's just are we going to meet certain criteria that our marketeers are telling a customer wants. So the whole side of, uh, you know, is it inspiring to use gets it squeezed right out of the uh, out of the equation right at the outset. So. Uh, we wanted to, we, we, really, we really like to make things that are just, make you feel good when you use them. Yeah, I would say that's about right. I mean, I, I don't know, a lot of us have been talking about it. It's hard to put a finger on what or why we just get excited about the propeller, but you just want to use it. You want to do the next thing. You want to, you know, keep challenging yourself. And it's, uh, it's far different than with other processes. I won't mention any names, but... Um, where it's hard to get into it, it's hard to keep wanting to program it. Uh, I mean, it works, and you can get the job done, but it's certainly not yeah. enjoyable. Oh, no, no. Would you guys say I'm a great right? yeah. <laughs> What frustrated you about make, uh, programming on other microcontrollers that led to the development of the propeller? Or um, there were just a lot of constra arbitrary constraints and you know, always wishing that, boy, why do we have to go through, like, some intermediate register when we've got to do a math operation? Why can't we just go register to register? And when you get into the chip design side, you see why they do that. I mean, it, it takes, you know, sometimes double the structure in, in, on the chip to be able to do something like register to register as opposed to, like, a single port memory where, uh, you know, you can serially read and write it, which actually is how the, the current propeller chip works. The next one is, has a four-port RAM for the cog memory, so it's pipeline and it can execute one instruction per clock, and every every single clock is going to read a, a, a source and a destination and an instruction and write a result fire operation. Um, but we did this, serialize this process in the current chip, but other chips, you know, they don't really do that. They'll just have an accumulator or a W or something, and everything has to go through this register. So you wind up doing two instructions to get anything done or any kind of math operation done. Um, I forget what else was asked. Did that answer the question? 